CCTV News gathers information from town meetings and events, departmental updates, and COVID-19 here in York County and Berwick. BCTV News will be shown daily at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Comcast channels 95 and 22, as well as streaming at www.berwicktv.org. It will also be available on demand and via our YouTube channel. On Tuesday, August 25th, the Board of Selectmen heard from Paul McKinney with Municipal Resources, Inc. Mr. McKinney presented the 2021 tax commitment information. The first item on new business is the 2021 tax commitment. Is um, you want to start off, Paul? Where we are, we um, sure. yeah, okay. Um, so you should have some um, spreadsheets in front of you. Uh, that uh, you can see that the town's uh, total taxable real estate base decreased from 2019 to 2020 by $831,600. This was primarily due to an increase in the personal exemptions, primarily the homestead exemption, which increased from 20,000 to 25,000. In addition, we processed more personal homestead ex exempt applications this year due to the governor's executive order extending the deadline to file from April 1st, uh, right up until the day of commitment. So although the real estate um, valuation actually increased by $6,912,700. The total of all exemptions increased by $7,744,700, resulting in a slight decrease of $831,600 in the total real estate value. The uh, personal property increased by $806,991. Uh, dollar, which is a 16 percent increase from last year the um, spreadsheet also shows that the um, the 2019 to 2020 county tax appropriations increased by 4.91 percent the municipal appropriations increased by 24.91 percent and the school education appropriations increased by 3.49 percent uh, the TIF value shows a decrease of $9,837, which is primarily due to a correction in calculating the TIF value. Uh, the second amendment to the 2019 tax year resulted in an increase of $7,359 for the TIF due to changing the negative um, net change between 2019 and 20 of uh, the assessed value. Um, in total, the uh, appropriations have increased by 13.32%. State revenue sharing is down 9.09%. Now that revenues are expected to increase about 24.05%. The homestead reimbursement increased by $177,651 or 56.6% over the 2019-20 tax year. This is due to the increase the amount of exemption from 20 to 25,000 and an increase in the percentage reimbursed by the state from 62 and a half to 70 percent. Overall, the total deductions and revenue noted on the warrant increased by $680,893.01 or 21.56 um, percent. When the uh, rent sheets were showing a, a range of um, tax rates, uh, the suggested overlays. We're recommending a tax rate of $19.36, which is a $49,000, $49,742,000 overlay. Um, there's any questions? Which, oh, which is an increase of um, uh, from last year, which was $17.53. It did have. Um, the average increase for a uh, for the uh, for the median home price, Karen, do you have that? Uh, yep, we have that as uh, two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. So based on uh, an average assessment of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, the um, increase in taxes would be four hundred and fifty eight dollars. About a ten point four four percent increase over last year. Anybody have any questions or? I don't know about questions. I don't know about questions, but I'll say ouch. Is, uh, 
Do you, you think we can um, hold the tax rate for another, for another year? Um, no. We, we are, um, a lot of that increase that you see, the 24.9%, is we're using $974,000 of undesignated fund balance this year to try to keep it low. And we had that available. We had 1.4 available to us by policy, but, uh, so you, but we can use it only for um, capital projects and items. So that's where all that funding is going. And, um, so what happens in the next year's budget? Are we going to be a million dollars shy on that one because we're spending this? Are we going to be able to hold this this increase this year for the next couple of years? You know, it really it really forward. depends. It really depends on revenue sharing. We cut back revenue sharing this year. Uh, from my, even though we we collected over six hundred thousand this year, and we budgeted five fifty, I cut it back another fifty thousand because I don't think it's going to be that high. Uh, the legislature, I t talking to the York County managers last Friday, um, we're, hope we're hoping that the legislature stays out of session and doesn't come back early because we don't want them to, to fool around with the revenue sharing or the home and change the homestead as well because they're going to be trying to hold their line. So, um, you know, this year we had a lot of one-time expenditures. Uh, we, ha we had to change out the fuel tanks. Up at the, uh, that was required by DEP. That was a hundred yeah. hundred thousand. Um, we picked up uh, the uh, principal interest on the fire station, so that drove a lot of this. Um, plus, we we funded the library this year. That was what the public wanted, uh, so yeah. that that increased it. And then the school had a uh, just over three percent increase, which is another two hundred and. I think 85,000 or 81,000 uh, increase this year. So everybody was going up and, uh, and revenues were going down and uh, Homestead didn't help and drop in values. So. On September 14th, they will begin reclaiming the section of Cranberry Meadow Road between Cemetery Road and Worcester Road. This will be the same process used on Cemetery Road where they tear up the old pavement, crush it, flatten it, and then resurface with new pavement. Please seek alternate routes if possible. Also, if you must drive by, drive slowly and carefully around the construction workers. Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day will be on September 12th between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. Drop-off is not at the transfer station. Please bring your waste items to 2 Industry Drive in Berwick. This is off from Route 4, across from Lowry's Lawn and Patio Furniture. Proof of residency will be required. Acceptable items include paints and polishes, turpentine, along with poisons, insecticides, fertilizers, and pool chemicals. It also includes antifreeze, transmission fluid, and fuel additives. Visit www.berwickmaine.org and scroll down to Recent News for more information. Do not bring latex paint, commercial or industrial waste, smoke detectors, ammunition or fireworks, fire extinguishers, prescription medication, asbestos, propane tanks, or radioactive waste. Again, visit www.berwickmaine.org. Scroll down to Recent News for more information. On Thursday, August 27th, Governor Mills signed an executive order to facilitate voting, protect health of voters and election officials amid COVID-19 pandemic. This executive order extends the deadline for voter registration applications submitted by mail or third person from October 13th to October 19th, 2020. In-person voter registration may still occur up to and on Election Day. It allows municipalities to begin processing absentee ballots up to seven days before the general election, rather than four days in the statute. This is to help election officials accommodate the expected increase in absentee voting. It authorizes the Secretary of State to issue guidance in consultation with Maine Center for Disease Control and Prevention and local officials to facilitate voting 
including the provision and security of extent external drop boxes accessible only by the clerk for the safe return of absentee ballots. It allows municipalities more time to conduct the public process and application necessary to consolidate polling places and allows municipalities to utilize election clerks from abutting counties if none are available in their own. It maintains the 50-person gathering limit in each voting space within a polling location to promote appropriate physical distancing, ensures that voting booths remain six feet apart at polling places, and requires voter lines outside of polling places to be marked with signage to enforce physical distancing. The governor's executive order may be amended in response to any emerging circumstances that threaten the integrity of the election or the health and safety of voters and election staff. Secretary of State Matthew Dunlap announced on August 17, 2020, that the online absentee ballot request service is available for the Tuesday, November 3, 2020 general election. Any registered May voter may choose to vote absentee. For more information or to request an absentee ballot online, visit maine.gov slash SOS or call 207-624-7650. COVID-19 cases in York County as of August 28, 2020 are as follows. 786 cases with 697 confirmed, 89 probable cases, and 15 deaths. There are 83 hospitalizations with 667 recoveries. In Berwick, we have 15 cumulative, probable, and confirmed cases. BCTV News is a recap of meetings, events, and town happenings. If you have a news item that you think we should cover, send your request to bctv at berwickmaine.org. BCTV is completely funded through franchise fees from Comcast. We are a nonprofit entity and we are bound by the rules established for public access stations by the FCC. Berwick residents who subscribe to Comcast may watch our public educational videos on Channel 22 and our government meetings, departmental, and informational videos on Channel 95. Both channels run 24-7 and are streamed at www.berwicktv.org.